Good afternoon. Well, thank you. Um, we all are prepared to shift gears at any given time. Uh, I head of government affairs for New York Life, and <clears throat> I want to say on behalf of our company how great it is and our great appreciation for CSI <clears throat> for hosting such an outstanding event. Um, I hope that you've been able to benefit from the range of perspectives that we've heard from government officials and, and industry leaders uh, as we try to work toward uh, fixing the issue related to services, expanding more globally. Um, I look at this as um, you think about all the times people say we really ought to do something now. Uh, but the fact is, if you think of us evolving beyond the, the economic recovery that we're faced with today, now really is the time. And I think the United States is a place that we truly can showcase as an example of what the services can do when you think about it making up 70 to 80 percent of our economy. What I'm here to do uh, today is to introduce uh, our speaker. Uh, and we are honored to have uh, Chairman Sandy Levin, uh, Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. <clears throat> His career in public service spans about 40 years, uh, 30 of those years representing the people of the 12th District of the State of Michigan. Uh, since his election in 1982, he has been one of the leading architects of U.S. trade uh, policy in Congress. Uh, Chairman Levin has played a key role in almost every major trade uh, debate, whether it's helping shape uh, the WTO agreements or permanent normal trade relations with China. Uh, more recently, he's played a lead role in the trade adjustment assistance uh, to include service workers. He has served in four, on four, four of six uh, subcommittees of the House Ways and Means Committee, and he ascended to the chairmanship in March of 2010. Uh, prior to this, he was a member of the state legislature in, his, in, in the state of Michigan and also a Senate Minority Leader. Interestingly, he also served as an assistant administrator at, at USAID, uh, which sort of gives him a whole other perspective uh, in this whole debate that we've been dealing with. He has a bachelor's degree from the University of Chicago, a master's from Columbia University, and a law degree from Harvard. I'm from Kentucky originally, and I can tell you we would be impressed with all of that. <laughs> um, and he was born in Detroit. Uh, he's an avid uh, Red Wings hockey fan. But what I hear he's, is he's most impressed with is the fact he's a great squash player. So I introduce to you Chairman Sandy Levin, House Ways and Means. What an exaggeration, a great squash player. Don't tell that to my brother. We've been playing uh, for 40 years, and we realized neither of us was any good. You've heard lots of speeches today about the importance of what you do. I did receive a copy of Ambassador Kirk's address to you. And my guess is, I guess, Pascal Lamy was here also, huh? right. So you've had a well-versed presentation of what you do every day. And so I don't think I'll go over the importance of services. And you know that from your work, and you heard it today. As I understand the format, I'll speak for a few minutes and then we can have some back and forth for a few minutes. I think Dave Camp is coming here this afternoon, and I don't want to take any of his time. So let me give you my perspective on services in the Doha round. I, I was at Doha. My recollection is somewhat dim by years. <laughs> How long has it been? This is the longest round, is it not? Um, I, I wasn't around. I was there for the end of the Uruguay round, but it wasn't as long. Tokyo was way before my time. Um, it, um, I have some dim memories also. You'll remember the circumstances that surrounded uh, the discussions, uh, and uh, they were unique and for our country and I think the world tragic a tragic environment in terms of what had happened shortly before. 
but I do remember some aspects of it somewhat uh, vividly. It was uh, to be a development round, no? The focus there, even then, was very much on agriculture and non-agricultural market access. It was interesting, the main discussions that really went on there that I remember best related to prescription medicines. And there were agreements that were worked out and I participated somewhat in those discussions. Uh, doctors Without Borders, Physicians Without Borders, I remember all of the, the discussions that we had. Well, we went back home, all of us, with very different perspectives, but with some high hopes uh, that uh, as a successor to the Uruguay round, that I think was a success up to a point, uh, could be matched in the years ahead. We didn't think a decade ahead. But in the next years, what happened, I think we all know this, was that ag very much dominated agriculture, dominated the discussions, and so did industrial tariffs, much less so the issue of access and non-tariff barriers. And I had had a commitment from our leadership uh, that non-tariff barriers would have a a, an even playing with the issue of industrial tariffs. Uh, that uh, really was not true in those next years. What was really clear was that services were on the back burner, if on the stove at all. And um, that was perhaps somewhat expected because this was a development round and if we looked at it realistically, but for the developing economies, and I hope my years in AID sensitize me more to that, though much of it goes back to my late father and our family and his work in Latin America. But maybe it was understandable because developing nations were less likely to have as primary an interest in services by and large as in agriculture. And so, I think that essentially uh, not very much happened as, as a result. Um, it was also, I think, understandable because there are no formulas that can apply, unlike the tariffs, right? Maybe none of us can fully understand it, even the negotiators, but there are formulas, etc. And also with services, it essentially was going to be more bilateral than multilateral with these exchange of lists and the so-called positive lists, etc. And also, I think, as we know, that in, in the area of services, there was a, a more limited role of the chair of the chair of the of the group. Well, then, what happened in more recent years? As I jotted down my notes from my recollection in my experience, um, the, the focus continued to be on agriculture and on NAMA. And there was a lot of optimism. And Mr. Lamy would come to see us quite often and he would say, we're 80 percent there. <laughs> And sometimes I would use the analogy of a football field, and I would say, I don't even think that's the red zone. <laughs> Pascal didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> Since I'm a Lions fan, I didn't know what I was talking about either. <laughs> um, so I would point out all the time, as I would meet to, on this subject, I would say to, to the distinguished leader, um, but but you say we're eighty percent there, but there's been almost you know, services are are on the ten yard line, the other ten yard line, the next metaphors, um, and.